ever since I made my last video on making a line falling robot, I always wanted to show you guys how it is like to participate and experience an actual line falling competition. Hence, I went to Edge 2025, which is the annual tech fest of Technome and Salt Lake, which has a few quality line falling events in them. I participated in those, captured some good shots, moments of other participants participating in the event. Hope you guys will enjoy it. So join me on my journey for that. Let's get started. Well, I visited the event twice. One was on 5th of April, which was for the prelims and 6th, which was for the finals. Well, somehow the audio that was recorded had a lot of noise in it. So here I am recording a voiceover of my own video. I headed straight towards the registration desk, got myself registered with the necessary credentials, had a look at the college campus and then headed straight towards the arena of autonomous robotics section. Well, the room that I entered in this clip was the room for the Track Hunter event, which was purely an autonomous line falling event. We had participants and competitors all around preparing their bots, troubleshooting their code, testing it out on the tracks and overall it was a very nice environment to have in order to test your bot and debug your code. Next, I went to have a look at the arena of Krakow Venture event, which was the line falling event with obstacles. And this is how the arena looked. It had a lot of interesting hurdles and obstacles, including inclined planes, bridge-like structures, and surely the track was a well-built one. So now we are at the line forward events arena at Tecum in Salt Lake, uh, the annual tech fest edge. And we have the track of venture is the name of this event, right? Yes. Along with we have another line following event that is Track Hunter, which is a purely uh, line following competition that is being commonly seen in Kolkata. But this is a lot more different. It has got obstacles, hurdles, and it's a more visually pleasing. Yes, event. it is to many consists of physical hurdles. You can right. see there is a survey and there's a 3D sided and there's a different ending also. Right. So there's a difference. And we have only been three, three events. One is track hunter, one is track adventure, and another is line falling race. Last year, Sangli part of the line falling race. Right, right, right. So line falling race is an on-spot event where two persons actually bet on their line falling robot on a similarly uh, and uh, optically inversed track, which are similar on both the sides, and the fastest one wins. But these uh, tracks are crazy. Like one of the first time that I'm seeing something like this uh, in my region. So let's have a look at the obstacles real quick. This is one of them, an inclined track. Another obstacle is this exact sine wave on which work is currently going on. Uh, the bot will enter from this side, will climb up these two elevated stations and will exit. We also have uh, this particular inclined bridge above which the bot needs to go and then turn all the way around and go beneath it. So yeah, these are quite interesting obstacles along with this particular section which I'm guessing is a ball pushing uh, parameterized obstacle. A ball will be placed right here and based on the distance that it goes points will be awarded like 10 points, 20 points, 30 points. Yeah, quite an interesting event. I thought of completing the prelims for track hunter on that day so I went to the arena, started tuning my bot and made one small change with the caster wheel. So I tested my bot with the caster wheel attached in front and now I wanted to test what will happen if I attach another caster wheel, uh, which is this yellow one right here, uh, at the mid part of the robot, uh, that is in this particular hole. Let's see if the performance gets enhanced. Well, according to science it should be because the moment of force is reduced, which is being straining on the wheels. So let's replace the caster wheel uh, with the wheel right here and see its performance. So now we have replaced the caster wheel with this yellow one right here at the back. So let's see how it what performs. After doing a few test runs, I found out that this particular setup wasn't giving me any real advantage. In fact, it was messing up with the settings I already had in my bot. I reverted back to the previous settings and I went for the final run for the prelims. What ready? Ready. I mean, 3-1, go over to the home. I must accelerate. Timer ready? Yeah. Head touch ready? Ready. Check point ready? Before ending the day, I went to have a quick look at the flash events arena. So this is the arena of one of the flash events, the line follower race. I'm gonna test my bot in this track. It's a totally race track. There are two tracks right here. Uh, both are symmetric but optically inverted. So let's give it a go. So 
so that was pretty much it for day one. It was now time to head back to our home and make necessary changes in our board for the final run on the next day. So I just returned home and there are a few changes which I need to do in my bot. Uh, first of all, um, for the line follower event, this particular setup is perfect uh, with the wheels that is this one, the custom 3D designed wheels. But for the Traco Venture event, that is the event which has inclined slopes in it, the torque produced by these 900 uh, GB37 motors are not at all enough. So I have these uh, 600 RPM or other 530 RPM GB37 motors and I will be swapping the 900 RPM with these when I will be playing the Traco Venture event and also I will have to increase the diameter of the wheels because I was not getting enough clearance between the ground and the bot which made the bot got stuck in the inclination uh, when I was testing it today in the actual track so that is one change I need to make also I'll be taking my 300 rpm gb37 motors uh, which has more torque but of course at the cost of a lower rpm if this is not enough to provide enough torque to drive my bot I'll have to use the 300 rpm ones and coming to the wheels I'll be using these wheels and these are generic wheels which are a little bit bigger than the wheels that I currently have I also have uh, these kind of wheels but uh, honestly these are used for manual robots and I guess this is a way way bigger uh, wheel for this particular setup and not at all suitable and nevertheless I'll be taking these wheels and will be using it my setup all right so it's day two and it's time for the finals I have replaced my bots motor with the 600 rpm gb37 motors for the track venture event so i'll be giving my track venture run it first let's see how it goes and after that i will be changing the motors to the 930 rpm motors and we'll be going for the test runs for the finals of the track hunter event so we are at the track venture arena right now and we have quite a few bots been programmed and tuned in several parts of the arena uh, we'll be plugging our battery to our bot real quick and we'll be start optimizing our code and other parameters to see how our bot performs in this track. As the time given for trial runs approached its end, every participant was locked in to tune their bots to perfection in order to complete the track with minimal hand touches. While my bot didn't have to go through a single hand touch in the trials, luck didn't favor me in the finals. My bot had to suffer one hand touch because it slipped out of the seesaw structure which was present in the track. After giving my final run at Traco Venture, well, it didn't go as planned, I had to do one hand touch. But after that, I mounted my GoPro on top of my bot to give another additional run, just for fun, to capture a good POV shot of the bot while it runs and rips through the track. And yeah, it captured some good footage and some unique footage actually. And it was quite uh, fun recording those footage. Enjoy that and I'll see you guys after that. Well, after the Traco Venture event, I had very little time for tuning my bot and setting it up for the Track Hunter event because it was around 6.30 in the evening. So all I did was quickly swapping the 530 RPM motors with the 900 RPM motors and then tuned my bot to the best of my ability in the limited time that was available and gave my final run. Three, two, one, go! Checkpoint. 
record. 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 It was indeed a visual treat to my eyes watching every LFR enthusiast test and debug their code and the robot on the tracks and I personally tried my level best to help out as many people as I can whether that be by lending lipo batteries, charging up their battery packs, giving them coding advice and the list goes on. One of the team asked me if I could race against them on the on-spot racing event uh, on the racing track. So I went to the racing arena and here is a quick clip of me racing against them. So right now we are at the race track and I thought of giving a sample run. So here I have my bot and another bot from team uh, D directional. So we'll be giving it a sample run. Let's see how this goes. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one, go. Right now I have my FPV quads, a 3D printed part for mounting the GoPro. I'm gonna mount it in front of the bot by removing the screws. Of course, I had to end the day with one final run on the finals track of the Track Hunter event with my GoPro mounted on my bot to capture the unique POV shot that it captures while being mounted on my line following bot. So I did just that and after two days of commencement of the event, the results were finally declared. I came out first in the Track Hunter event followed by Team T-Rex who came second. In the Track Venture event, the first position was secured by Team Gigabyte and the second position was secured by Team T-Rex. Whatever be the position, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, are we able to continuously learn and improve ourselves from every competition that we attend? If this video inspired you to make a line following bot of your own, I would call this video a success. I ended this video or vlog on the very day of the event. So let's get back to that. So now we are done with all the line followed events and it has come to an end. It was an amazing experience at Edge 25 participating and also seeing other line followers and fellow electronic enthusiasts participate in this kind of a quality event. So that was it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked, make sure you subscribe, follow my channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Goodbye. Bye -bye.